Trail running shoes, where do you start? What trail running shoes do you own? Are you looking to buy your first pair of trail running shoes? What are you looking for in your first pair? The world of trail running shoes can be a bit of a minefield when it comes to getting your first pair. So hopefully this video will help you navigate through some of those unknowns and get your first pair out on the trail. So welcome back. Uh, this is a bit of a different video for me. And uh, this is gonna be basically a show and tell of my trail running shoes, which solely comprise of uh, the Hoke Speed Goats uh, with the introduction of the Speed Mufate 3s, which I've only just recently got. As you can tell by the number that I have, I'll obviously be singing their praises and how they work for me, but also covering some of the negatives uh, as well. So firstly, I'm gonna go over the basics of trail running shoes, what you need to think about when you're going to go and purchase your first pair, and some tips on their use and fit. So firstly, I'll go over the, some of the fundamentals of trail running shoes and how they differ from that of road shoes. And that in comprises of the, the fit, um, the grip or the lug depth, uh, the amount of drop they have, and also the protection that they provide. So in front of me here, I've got the, my first pair of Speed Goats, uh, which are the Speed Goat 2s. Then I went for the 3s, the 4s, and these are slightly different in that they're the Hoka Eva Jaws, the more aggressive trail shoe, which I'll describe in a minute. Uh, and recently, which I'll show you later, is the Speed and Fate 3s, uh, which I thought I needed to branch out from these three and just try something different. So first of all, when you're choosing a trail shoe, you need to think about what sort of terrain you're going to be running on, whether that's light gravel tracks, forest paths, mountain areas, beach, um, a combination of road and off-road. So have a think about what terrain you're going to be running on mostly. Also, what distance are you going to be running? Are you going to be running long distance, short distance, or a combination of all of it in your training? Anywhere from one to 10 kilometers would require a nice, comfortable, nimble, lightweight shoe. When you move up from 10 and above, up to 50 kilometers, for example, you would need a bit more cushioning and a bit more support to get you through those longer runs. Anywhere after 50 kilometers, 60 up to 100, you need a bit more stability, a bit more protection at the front of the shoe, and a bit more firmness as you take on those runs. When you're choosing your shoe as well, think about what your objectives are, how often you're going to get out, how far you're going to run, how long you're going to run for, the terrain that you're running on. All of these factors come into choosing the right shoe that works for you. And one of the most important factors is the fit. It's very important to try and try on your shoes, have a little run in them, see how they fit and whether they fit your feet accordingly. Okay, so there's a lot of different trail shoes to choose from out there. If you're running on light trail, for example, less technical runs on trails that are wider, smoother, fairly fat terrain, you'll be looking at a lightweight, stiffer and more protected upper than uh, road shoes would have. As you move on, you get to a slightly more rugged trail shoe. These are wide, smooth trails to narrow technical single track, including some rocks and roots, for example. Usually they come with toe guards to protect against uh, stubs and scuffs, which I am very prone to as I don't lift my uh, feet enough when I'm running. Um, some come with underfoot plates or reinforcement to protect against rocks and roots. Uh, lugs tend to be deeper and multi-directional for better traction in mud and looser terrain. Although in thick mud, I have to say, there's no lug that I've found that uh, stops your shoe clogging up completely. Moving on to off-road trail shoes, these are designed to handle all conditions. They have many of the features of the rugged trail shoe that I've just previously mentioned, but are more robust and have heavier materials to increase the stiffness. Durable uppers and deeper lugs allow for harsh terrain and conditions. And for me, my pair of these uh, off-road rugged shoes are the Hoka Eva Jaws, which I'll show you in a second. So moving on to the fit of the shoe, this is quite important to try them on before you buy. Uh, a lot of decent running shops will allow you to try them on in the shop. They might have a treadmill or um, a multi-terrain surface that you can run over just to see how it feels. And also remember with trail shoes, it's important to have a bit of space, leave a bit of space at the front of your toe box 
and that's uh, to allow for downhill running where you don't want your toe bashing into the end of the shoe, which I made the mistake of in my first ever trail race and uh, resulted in black toenails, thankfully, which grew back. Um, nowadays, they cater for all types of feet, wide or narrow, so if you do try a shoe on and it feels a bit tight across the top of your foot, you can, option, uh, you can choose a wider option. So moving on to cushioning of a shoe, there's many options and it's basically personal preference as to how much cushioning you have. For me personally, I transitioned from um, running shoe on the road to trail shoe, having recovered from shin splints and I wanted a bit of cushioning uh, as a peace of mind to protect me from that reoccurring off-road. So that's what swayed me after a lot of research to go with the speed goats. Um, they do look like they have a lot of cushioning here, but actually the, the drop inside means that your heel is actually only coming to about a third of the way down. So have a look for the amount of cushioning you have. Uh, that dictates what terrain you're going to be running on and how your body reacts to transitioning to trail running. So moving on to drop. The drop of a shoe can play an important part in how you have a comfortable run um, and also how your muscles adapt to the way that you're running off-road. So traditionally, heel to toe drop is the distance in height from the heel to the toe. Most of my shoes here vary between four and five millimeters. So once again, drop is the difference between how much lower your toes are to the heel in your shoe. Drop is important because it relates to how you strike the ground with each stride. For example, shoes with a zero to four millimeter drop will encourage you to land on your mid to forefoot. And shoes with a higher drop of eight to 12 millimeters, for example, will encourage you to um, land on your heel. If you're unsure how much drop to go for, go with something that's similar to your current shoe or your current road shoe. Changing your stride, which you will do when running on trail, will work different muscle groups than you're used to. So this will take time for your body to adapt to. So bear that in mind. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the shoes that I have. And I started my trail running career with the Speedgoat 2s. And they've been excellent for me. I'm just gonna give you a few stats on my pairs of shoes and what they've done. So these are the Speedgoat 2s. They um, weigh about 10 ounces. The heel to toe drop here is 6.1 millimeters, which is quite a lot, um, and, but it does come with a lot of cushioning. So although I'm striking on the heel slightly more, it compensates with the cushioning that I have in it. To date, I've done about 730 miles in these shoes and they've been very good for me. The signs of wear that they show are in the toe box here, you can see that they've started, well, they've completely worn out. So that will be my big toe that comes through there. Um, I always find that inside on the heel at the back, I've got a high heel, um, it wears away there first. And also, if you look at the lugs on the back, you can see that they've worn down. But also here, on my outside edge of my left foot, it's completely worn away. And that is the case for all of my running shoes. This area tends to wear away first. On the right foot, it's showing a bit of wear here and the protective uh, material hasn't done its job quite so good on here. And that's me catching my feet on brambles or sticks. And again, on the outside edge here, you can see that the grip has completely worn away. From the success of my Speedgoat 2s, I moved on to the Speedgoat 3s with no questions. So I got these. Um, these have done 1,200 miles, um, according to Strava, uh, so a lot more. And as a result, we've got the same breakthrough here um, on the left foot, um, a bit further back from the front big toe, so unrelated. And also you can see that it's split down the side here. On the outside edge, showing signs of wear just here as well. Okay, these are weighing 10 ounces again, but the drop is 4.2 millimeters. 
so my running style as I adapted adjusted to that as well. The lugs obviously this area is going to be worn um, which they have uh, and as you can see on the outside edge again this bit is completely worn away so obviously I'm landing on my heel on its outside edge. On the right shoe you've got a bit of wear on the inside here and again on the outside here. Other than that the rest of the shoe is intact the usual heel wear on the inside that's me I don't know if you experience the same. Okay so moving on to the Speedgoat 4s I uh, obviously love them I've moved up this particular pair have done 770 miles uh, and the wear seems to have they seem to have improved the durability and the protection a lot more between the Speedgoat 2s and these being the 4s. 770 miles as I said um, with a drop of four millimeters from heel to toe. Um, I'll show you again here, outside edge, left foot, the wear is in the same place as all the rest. My change in running hasn't occurred. Uh, you've got a split in the side outside section there and at the front here you can see where my big toe will normally come through, hasn't quite yet. This particular material here is a lot more durable and robust than the Speedgoat 2s and 3s and that shows that it hasn't started wearing away there yet. Um, and likewise, they've put a nice protective, even more, uh, a more robust uh, protective sleeve on the toe box as well. So now moving on to the Hoka Evo Jaws, my more aggressive shoe. This is the most aggressive uh, trail running shoe that I have. I've done only 194 miles in these and these have specifically only been used for specific trail races. Anything up to 15 miles was the most I've done um, and training runs in really bad conditions when it's really muddy here in the UK. Um, these are a lot stiffer, um, they have a lot less protection at the front, um, they weigh only 7 ounces and the heel to toe drop is 4 millimeters again. Um, the wear is not showing much, sorry about the mess. Uh, what I like about these is they dry really quickly. Um, they've got really supported, protected upper, much more so than the speed goats. Um, and you can really drag your feet through the, the brambles uh, over roots, scuff your toes on rocks, and I've had no issues. It's not showing any signs of wear um, that I can see. The only bit of wear is on my heel. These particular shoes have very little cushioning, so it's very much of a natural feel run, um, which is why I can't wear them for long distance and wouldn't wear them for long distance. I would be too paranoid that my shin splints would be coming back. Um, and especially if you have to run any portions on the road, you can really feel the difference wearing these. So these are really reserved for tough conditions, steep conditions and really bad weather conditions. And finally, moving on to the Speed Mafate 3s. These are fairly new. I've done 203 miles in these already. And unfortunately for these shoes, the conditions I've been running in since I've started using them have been really bad. It's been really icy, frozen, or really boggy and muddy. So these have got a real baptism of fire um, introduction to trail running. And we'll see how that's faring in a, in a couple of months when the weather gets a bit better. But at the moment, after 200 miles, it's not showing too much signs. The only thing I would say is on the right foot inside edge, it's showing wear here. And that's between the transition of the more protective seam around the outside and then the, the mesh on the top. This transition point is, tends to be where it starts splitting first and you can see it's already happening. So I'm sure that will wear through fairly soon if these conditions continue. Um, the lug side on the back is a lot better and I've noticed that these are a lot more stiffer in, in the bend. Um, there's a much better reinforced plate under here for landing hard on any rocks or root sections and the heel to toe drop is four millimeters similar to the other speed goats that I've had. Another thing I quickly want to mention is how I look after my shoes. Um, I tend to just go out, 
and have a run. If they're really muddy, caked in mud, when I get back, these pair you can't really see but they're still soaking wet, what I do is just use the hose outside and I just jet wash it, jet wash all the mud off it, um, stick the hose inside to get all the grit out, pour it out and let them dry in the utility room or um, somewhere warm and they're normally good to go the next day. Um, this particular pair and this particular pair and to an extent this one I just chuck in the washing machine on the sports shoe cycle uh, and I've done that a number of times. Um, whether or not that contributes to the wear and um, the deterioration of these shoes I'm not sure. So there you have a few tips on getting your first trail shoes or thinking about getting a first pair of trail shoes. As I said this is my personal preference. I have got on really well with the Hoka brand and specifically the Speedgo range. Um, I'm trying out the Mafate 3s, we'll see how they go in due course. So let me know down in the comments if you find this helpful in any way. Let me know what your preferred shoes are and if you have become obsessed with a particular brand and range and if so what they are uh, because I'd be interested. Um, after having three versions of the Speed Goats, I thought, okay, I need to branch out and try something a bit different. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for even bothering to watch my videos. Um, this is my experience of my trail running shoes, and if it's helpful to anyone that's looking to buy some Hoka Speed Goats, I hope it's helped in some way. If you've got any suggestions on how I could improve that, just put them in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up and uh, leave me a comment. I really appreciate it. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one.